This video is brought to you by Skillshare. Okay, okay, so at the end of my last video, the one who shan't be named, that's what we're calling her by the way, the one who shan't be named, had basically cheated on me because I heard her doing you know what with someone who I thought was a good friend of mine in the room across from me. And because of that, I had written her off completely from my life. She hurt me more than anyone has ever hurt me before. So why are we still talking about this then? Didn't you cut her off? Oh, sweet, sweet Vibby, prepare to be severely disappointed. <laughs> Because I think I either had a stroke or something just happened. What? I feel significantly warmer. And you look significantly different. I'm gonna put my money on stroke because I have no idea what the hell you're talking about. Wait, wait, wait you didn't feel that? You, you look visually different. Okay, never mind. I'm changing my answer to drunk. Uh, no, I'm not drunk. I promise. I feel like something's changed. Well, I feel like you're drunk. Look, Vivi, I, I have a beard now. Like, put, uh, Kurt, look at me. You're drunk. Look, I'm not. Nope, no buts. I'm not dealing with another mental breakdown in the middle of a video. Just focus, and I'm sure you'll realize you're acting crazy. <sighs> okay, all right, okay. What were we talking about again? You severely disappointing me. <sighs> All right, at least that hasn't changed. So one would think, whoa, hello, the, the, this is new. Oh my God, what are you on about this time? And you're small now, hello? Kurt, you're drunk. Okay, you can think that, but can we acknowledge that you are smaller and significantly cuter than what you were a few seconds ago? No, that definitely did happen. I am much cuter now. <sighs> Goodness. Okay, I generally thought I was losing my mind because that did not make- But that happens all the time. I'm losing my mind. Focus. <sighs> okay, all right, fine. See, one would think that after her sleeping with a good friend of mine across the hall with an earshot of me, I'd be completely done with her. But that wasn't the case, not in the slightest. See, not too long after that, I'd fallen right back into her arms harder I had ever had to anyone in my entire life. Were you drunk then too? Okay, look, believe it or not, at the time, doing this was reasonably understandable. Understandable? Yes. I don't think you know what understandable means. No, I do. I, because you're drunk. I'm not drunk. That's what every drunk person says. <sighs> all right, well, all I can say is that much like objects, life works analogous to Isaac Newton's third law of motion. Yeah, I'm bringing gravity into this bitch. Specifically in that for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. For something to be moved uphill, something analogous to the strength of that hill has to move it up there. So if that metaphorical hill was her making me cry myself to sleep in the hallway of an apartment complex, you can only imagine the strength of the force of the trauma that pushed me back to her through all that past hating someone who hurt me worse than anyone I've ever been with. Oh God, maybe I need to be drunk for this. See, see? All right, so let's take it back, specifically to the video before the last one. I feel like that's as good a place to start as any. So about two-ish weeks after the incident, I was sitting at home just chilling, but still kind of thrown about the whole thing. It felt kind of like PTSD from war, but instead of like Nazis, I was fighting toxic masculine hookup culture. And for some reason during that time, I started to feel this weird pain in my neck, like a swollen kind of feeling. And I touch it and I feel these two swollen bulges. Oh no, I see where this is going. Oh really, do tell. Did you Google your symptoms and then get really worried you had something terrible? No, that happens later. Look, just let me, let me finish please. So from the beginning, I actually knew what this thing was, which is probably why it was so scary. So this is the part of video where you get medical advice for someone who is not qualified at all, but I'm not qualified to give you any advice, so you know, fuck it. Whenever you get really sick, you might feel little bumps in your neck get swollen, or they could also be in your armpit too, or any other places. Again, not really qualified to talk about this. These are your lymph nodes. They function as filters, trapping viruses, bacteria, and other causes of illness before they can infect other parts of your body. I know that was very sciencey. please stay with me. And when they get swollen, it usually means there's something in your body causing an infection. And I've had them every once in a while when I gotten sick. So I have already panic Googled them before. So then why did you worry? See, that's, that's the thing. Um, I wasn't sick though. See, I just felt the swollen lymph nodes in my neck and I had no other symptoms. I wasn't sick, homeboy wasn't coughing, nothing. And that scared me. And then I started Googling symptoms. There it is. Yep, yeah, 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 it's there. All right, so good life advice. When you're sick or, or not feeling well, don't, 
Google? Googling your symptoms is like asking Reddit what to do about your relationship. If that's all you do, you're gonna end up thinking you're in a way worse position than you really are. Like I did. And for me, after searching, I saw that swollen lymph nodes with no symptoms could be attributed to uh, HIV. Now, I'm a bit of a paranoid guy. One time he saw a roach in the apartment and had to sleep next to a can of Raid for a week. Yo, that thing was just chilling on the wall. Oh! Oh! But this, this was on a whole different level of work. I mean, one concern I always had, and to this day, still have with hookup culture is the idea of meeting up with a stranger and engaging in the adult dance and there's no worry of catching something uh hello how do y'all sleep well at night y'all think i'm scared of roaches in the house how about roaches on your dick but usually all it takes is a little logic to sort these things out you know i mean if you really think about it it couldn't have even been hiv i mean like i said in the last video we didn't even have the finish line the adult dance uh the forbidden glizzy. Sex. Yeah, what she said, sex. And for HIV to be transmitted, certain body fluids would have to enter the bloodstream. And we didn't do anything like that that could have led to that, is what I wish I could say right now. See, as some of y'all may have forgotten from the last video, when we kissed before the whole forbidden glizzy dance started, she bit my lips so hard. I bled. Homeboy was gushing, it was not a pretty sight. And then, you know, after that, instead of stopping like, you know, a normal person, activities were done that could lead to such liquids entering my bloodstream. Oral sex? Yeah, oral sex, what she said. And with that, yes, I'd like to congratulate myself for finally directly saying that I have done something sexual with someone else. Thank you, Kurt. Congratulations, Kurt. My parents watch these. Hey, Dad, see y'all around Christmas. So I did more searching. It was a terrible idea, by the way. And more things started to add up, especially based off the timeline of events. Specifically, my lymph nodes started to get swollen about two or three weeks after exposure, which is the general exact timeline where initial symptoms are supposed to start. So I was hurting. This very well could be the case. This is not looking really in my favor. Now, needless to say, I'm freaking all the way out because this isn't something that you can just fix like that. Not only if I had this, would my life be changed forever, but I'm at risk of my health deteriorating in general, not to mention the costs. I mean, as a college student, I was already paying tens of thousands of dollars for a useless degree. And if the test was positive, I knew to spend tens of thousands of dollars to just live. Th this is not fair. I mean, I was barely living now. And even after that, what if my family figured this out? Who, by the way, didn't even know I was doing stuff. Probably until this video. Hi, mom. I'll, I'll see you during the holidays. Would I ever marry, have kids? My life felt like it was spiraling. I mean, imagine being in that place where it feels like you have nothing. I fell into a depression. And the fun thing about depression is that it can easily get worse. See, there was something that made the situation 10 times more scary than what it needed to be. Something that made me fear everything more. See, to accurately test for HIV, you have to land in a certain time frame. And out of the two weeks I had contracted the virus, I had to wait an additional two weeks to take the test that would read accurately. So you know the feeling when you like gotta take a test and you're really scared about it and you're like, man, just get it over with? What if you were that anxious for two weeks and also the test will literally kill you? Yeah, that's that's the HIV test. Now granted, I was very uneducated at the time. HIV shouldn't be as demonized as it is now. It is not nearly the death sentence as it was back then. In fact, a lot of people live normally and are normal people who have have HIV. The people who have HIV can still get in relationships, find people, and not spread it. Like, there's a ton of, like, worry about it. But that wasn't the Googling that I was doing at the time. Two-week frame or very deadly disease. So, uh, I was scared. So I just had to sit in this incredibly horrible, dark place with my mind eating at me for two more weeks. I was completely lost. I didn't want to tell my roommates, my friends, I couldn't tell my parents. Sorry, mom. Felt like I was stuck. Like my brain was strapped down in a straitjacket. No way to get out. I had nowhere or one to go to, except the one person I really had that I could talk to about this. Someone who left a hole in my heart. Something that was missing and that I needed back. Yeah. See what I mean when I said this wasn't that easy? The girl who shan't be named. She was the only person I did have at the time. That's saying a lot considering 
she hurt me like that already. Someone I had connected with even though she had done me so dirty. I couldn't help but feel the need to fall back to her because I was already falling due to my depression. None of that old stuff mattered anymore. So I hit her with a text. So that's why you went back to her? Yeah, that's pretty much the gist of it. Newton's third law. So the equal action was the scare, and the reaction was getting back with someone you hated. Right on the money, Vivi. I mean, it's wild. The only person I had left was someone I hated and was so willing to forgive because of the situation I was in. I remember the day I unblocked her from my phone and texted her, and I quote, I need you. I'm scared. And she came running. Maybe it was out of the guilt of what she did before. Maybe it was out of the love she still had for me, but I remember crying into her arms that day and explaining everything that happened. From there, over those two weeks, I tear down every bit of hate I had, every bit of it to have this person in my life. I didn't care anymore. We talked every day again. She spent the night in my house a lot. And even though I knew we weren't a match and I knew she wronged me, despite how bad it was, I needed someone, even if it was the worst possible person for me. And a few weeks later, everything came to a head. I remember sitting in her car, scared, literally shaking. You ever have a moment where you were so scared you couldn't think straight? Like your brain was being smothered with blankets. You're shaking so bad that you couldn't even hold a cup of water without it spilling. That was that moment for me, sitting in her car. I remember going to the clinic and the doctor handing me that paper saying the results were going to be right there. I was trembling as I opened up the manila folder, too scared to see what was under it, but I had to and I opened it. It was negative, obviously, but man, God, have I never known happiness so great in my entire life. I was clear. I feel like I could jump over a mountain, yo. Honestly, there is no happiness than knowing you don't have an STD. Y'all should try it. Now, honestly, if I had been chronically scarred for the rest of my life from those past two weeks, I'd say that was probably the most euphoric high I've ever had in my entire life and would do again. I wouldn't do it again. I'm, I'm fucking with Jesus. I mean, deadass, I was about to kiss the doctor right on the lips. That probably wasn't a good look considering I literally had just gotten results on a test implicated me that I was actually active. So overall, the doctor said I was well and I probably was just sick during the time and couldn't tell the symptoms. My lymph nodes had gone away since then anyway, but I was too depressed to notice, too into this fake relationship. It very well could have been my deep worry. But you ended up with someone who, again, made you cry in a hallway. <sighs> and yep, that brings it all around full circle. See, because of that whole incident, although I was happy I was free, I really had backtracked further than I would have period. I plunged deeper into my codependency for her because although she was there for me, it didn't mean that we were a good fit. It didn't mean that we would stop hurting each other. It didn't mean none of that stuff in the past never happened because of this moment. I had grown such an intense codependency on her that led to me dealing with her to this day. But we'll get into those incidents another time. See, now that you've gotten that story off your chest, don't you feel more sober? Sober? What are you talking about? Yeah, because you were really drunk during the beginning there. Oh. 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 Every, no, no, no. That's still true. I just forgot because I was very depressed there for a second. Depression does do that. Trust me, Vibby. Something happened. I don't know what, but I will find out eventually. But I, I need to cry first, so. There, there. Now, please don't use Google to learn more about your symptoms. The only searching and learning you should be doing is with Skillshare. Oh, the transition. I hope Skillshare, I'm sorry. I am not associating the brand with STDs. It is the opposite of an STD. I don't know what that means. If they approve this ad, oh my God. <laughs> Skillshare is an online learning community that offers membership with meaning. With so much to explore, real products to create, and the support of fellow creative, Skillshare empowers you to accomplish real growth and not a growth somewhere where you don't want it man i'm gonna commit to these huh oh boy now they can't tell you if that thing in your nether regions is something that needs to be checked out but what you can do is check out some of their amazing classes oh god <laughs> Yeah! Nah, but seriously, from classes to photography, art, writing, and more, Skillshare really has it all. Uh, me personally, I'm on my writing stuff, so I've been checking out storytelling, one-on-one, -on -one, character conflict, context, and craft. And although some people say things around here are the same, maybe I should look at Beginner's Guide to Master Phase Drawing Anime and Manga by Sensei. Couldn't tell you why. Conspiracy theories about the whole fabric of reality changing aside, uh, Skillshare's affordable. 
<laughs> because an annual subscription is less than $10 a month. But you better get on it quick because only the first 1,000 people to use the link in my description will get a free trial of Skillshare Premium. So once again, click my link in the description, only the first 1,000 people, and get your free trial of Skillshare Premium. Much love, Skillshare. Thank you for sponsoring this video. Oh, what's up, y'all? This video has been so long in the making, and I want to thank y'all for checking it out. Seriously, it means a lot to me. We've been working on this one for so long, this idea, and finally having it all come together means the world to me. So everyone who supported, thank you so much. Especially a big thank you to my patrons who could help me like afford to be able to step up the style and hopefully we can continue doing this. If y'all support on Patreon, that means a lot. Uh, it really is on y'all. So really, thank you guys. Also, thank you to our new artist, Senny. Yo, fantastic. She's amazing. Uh, link to link to her in the bio, amazing art. Thank you again, Vivi, for being here. Thank you everyone who was involved uh, and everything, man. <laughs> and, and what's great is that doing this style not only makes it easier for me to make videos, but I think they look way better too. So yeah, let me know in the comments, what did you think of the video? Did you like the style? Is there something you wanna change? Do you like the old one? Let me know. But yeah, this is the direction I think I wanna go, so. Um, yeah, <laughs> that's about it, I think. Um, I, I really look forward to more videos like this in the future, and I will see you guys soon. Peace.